So as we're arriving, if it's available to you, just beginning to notice your body, your body and your heart. You don't need to get into any special posture, although you're welcome to do that if you want. But just starting to attune to what's here with you, to what's here in you. As was named, sometimes we hide, right? We hide from ourselves. We hide parts of ourselves, try to push things away or suppress things or run away from things. And we feel that, you know, we feel that in our hearts. We feel that, oh, get away or you're not okay or, I don't like that part very much. I've been noticing my mind. It's been happening forever for 52 years, I imagine, at this point. But there's been more awareness of it recently. I got to see it today very clearly. I came out of retreat yesterday. Some walk by someone on the street that I don't know, and some story arises in the mind, some judgment, some, some not liking something. And there was this real feeling and knowing in myself. It wasn't articulated with these words, but I heard these words many years ago. It was very clearly this experience of, oh, that's an unacknowledged part of me that I'm not liking. And that's why I was in resistance to that experience. Have any of you heard that idea before that when you're in aversion to someone or something, it's some unacknowledged part of you or not unacknowledged, but recognized and not liked? Come on. Yeah. All right. Everyone, maybe. Like, you know, heard you've heard of it. Doesn't mean I believe it. I hear you. Right. But you've heard that out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. And some of us have recognized that from our own experience, maybe. <clears throat> yeah. So I could just keep talking, and I'm going to not do that. I'll talk more in a bit. But the practice I'd like to offer. I love how vulnerable I feel right now. I feel so much rawness. I'm gonna share with you a practice that has been supporting me that I have been engaging with for, like it's been developing over some years now, maybe. Mm -hmm. Starting to taste it pre-COVID on retreat, just pre-COVID, but getting clearer and clearer in articulation from teachers. And then I just came out of a 10-day retreat that was focused on the teachings of Sai Bhagavatajaniya. And although I have been practicing in that style in different ways, thanks to Andrea Fella for some years now, is the first successful retreat in that style I've been able to attend. I, was on retreat with some other students of his in 2015, maybe. And I, I couldn't understand the teachers. I had tasted the practice a little bit before, but I couldn't understand the teachers. So I was just doing my, what, I was getting very frustrated and I was doing what I already knew from Thich Nhat Hanh and Ajahn Chah. And so I just missed the Tejaniya in that experience. So we'll talk more about that in a bit, but the fundamental to this practice this way of practicing insight meditation, this way of practicing Theravada Buddhism, is this embracing and accepting of every fucking thing. And so if you come here when I'm here, there will be some foul mouthness, maybe not excessive, but if that doesn't work for you, another teacher might be a better match. Just embrace it all, that this too is allowed, that this is okay, that this is welcome, to the tension that I'm feeling up here, right now, and the, the sweat, my feet are like ripping sweat suddenly, and the palms of my hands and my armpits, because I care, because this has been so impactful for me. And I'm not yet confident that I'm going to be able to bring words to it, that it's gonna make sense to you, because I know very clearly that experience of the words not making sense. And I know how frustrated I was back in 2015 or whenever that retreat was. 
So we'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see what happens. And um, welcome. Welcome to the San Francisco Dharma Collective. Welcome to Mindful Mondays, which is an offering of spiritual friend Sangha. And it is currently being co-held by myself, Augusta Hopkins, and Lev Fresh White, and by Moraini. So the three of us will be teaching over the next couple of months. And it's just going to be in flow, and each teacher will bring their own stuff, you know, their own style. And I know that all of us will be sharing with you practices that we do. We're going to bring our practice. So you're going to get fresh, straight, raw, real practice from each of us. And so we'll be alive with you, which is one of this great gifts of actually being in person with people. Zoom and technology is amazing. You have access to an abundance of teaching and teachers that way. But to be you know, in the flesh with people has a different, different experience. So welcome to the ride. So welcome to the ride. And mm, although I invited you a few minutes ago to tune, in, to tune into your body, if your experience is anything like mine, you probably stopped doing that at some point in the last several minutes. No problem. That's what happens. But this, this soft, gentle, light touch of awareness, you know, it, it, it can just show up. And we can help it to show up, but so that we can be aware of all of the experience of our lives. We can be aware of not liking something. We can be aware of liking something. We can be aware of attention. We can be aware of a judgment. We can be aware of joy, delight, and excitement. We can be aware of awareness. We can be aware of our bodies resting here. And as I like to do, we're going to go around the room. If, if I could make this space the way I wanted for the hour and a half that I'm here, we'd be sitting in a circle. But Tom and I explored this when I first started teaching here, and it was just a little too much trouble to rearrange the chairs for that short period of time. Who knows, as time goes on, what will be happening. But so if you can feel in your heart that we're in a circle together. Across the Zoom lands and here in the space, that we're in a circle together. An inclusive, welcoming circle of human beings, of perfectly imperfect, which I will model as best I can, perfectly imperfect human beings who have come here to awaken, you know, to awaken from the delusion of separateness, to awaken from the delusion of our fucked upness, but like, we we'll come here, and we want all of ourselves to be able to come here, all of the parts of ourselves. And sometimes that's scary. You know, there's parts we put in, in, in the closet, so to speak, or in there, in the little black bag, there's um, maybe some of you have, have heard it. And so again, I'm just remembering myself, so I'll mention it to you. How's your body feeling? <laughs> right, so we can, uh, this awareness just arises on its own all the time. And we become aware of it arising through practice. And in the meantime, we can kind of remind ourselves, and it's one of the gifts of having Sangha or being in Kalyanamitta is that we can support each other to remind ourselves, are you aware? What are you aware of? And then if you want to like get into it a little bit more, it's like, and then what's your relationship to that? So we'll see what happens in the guided, but so just kind of noticing how are you feeling right now in your heart, in your mind, in your body? Is there ease? Is there tension? Is the heart contracted or spacious? It's all cool. It's all okay. We're not like trying to get the heart all blissed out and zen. Like that, we're not trying to do anything. We're waking up to the moment. We're waking up to ourselves as we are. So what's here in you? 
right now. Just tuning in to yourself. And just in the hopes that it might make you feel more at ease, my apologies if it makes you feel more uncomfortable, I'll just share out loud a little bit of what I notice when I tune in. I'm terrified. My whole neck is tight now, in addition to my shoulder. It's like right up the spine there. And as I touch that, and I tell you, I feel a wave of allowing. I felt my left shoulder drop. The pain is still there in my right shoulder and in my neck. And the rest of my body is soft, I'm starting to get that little extra saliva in the mouth that happens that we might notice sometimes when we're in meditation. In meditation, I think my language around that will change as I keep practicing in this way, but when the body relaxes deeply, something happens with the salivary gland. And coming out of 10 days of practice in this way, that switch is more available to me right now. There's like just like, it's a little bit easier to lift up or turn on or invite in there's no doing. I'm not lifting it up, turning it on, or inviting it in. So that's not that's not the best language for it. But there's more ease in awareness of the arising of awareness because I've been cultivating it in this way these last 10 days. And so today, I don't have to, quote, unquote, meditate in order to be aware of being aware in the present moment. I keep thinking I can stop talking and then something else shows up that I think would be useful for me to say. So my apologies. We'll see how that works out. And we're getting to learn together. Maybe this language will be helpful for you as we sit together. But when Saida Utejaniya was asked about how he does walking meditation, maybe some of you have practiced walking meditation before, he said, I don't practice walking meditation. I am aware while walking. So may we be aware while living and while sharing this evening together. Noticing awareness throughout the evening when it becomes available to us so that the listening and the talking and the quote unquote meditating aren't separate activities. So that we can embrace ourselves and embrace the moment and be with ourselves just as we are moment by moment, always changing. <laughs> that's my wish for myself Well, that's my wish for you. So that awareness is embodied in our lives. It's not something that we do once a day or twice a day or once a week or, you know, whatever. It's not a doing. It's not a doing, right? It's a being. And we are human beings. We are actually being, actually existing 24-7. What if we were aware for that? How you doing? I'm not quite as afraid. <laughs> I can feel there's a little bit more ease in my body. But not because I was cultivating ease. Like, and that was one of the clearest messages I got during this 10 day retreat. It's like, no, I'm not cultivating anything. And relaxation, the experience of resting, the experience of ease is a foundation for mindfulness, is a foundation for awareness. 
So I'd like to invite you, if you're going to practice something tonight while we're together, to practice resting. That's how I came into this style of practice was by needing to rest. <laughs> So, practicing resting, tuning in to your own heart, mind, and body. We're going to begin, which is probably not what you're used to. So, notice just practicing as best you can, being aware of your body and noticing if your heart is constricting or expanding or anything in the neck or shoulders or big body stuff or whatever you're noticing. If you're noticing the mind, that's fine. But I think right now my encouragement would be to really practice in the body, cultivating awareness, noticing, noticing. See, my language is all contradictory because I'm still learning how to talk about this. So bear with me. Noticing what's happening in the body. Noticing. And if you're cultivating anything, just a, a gentle encouragement every once in a while to rest or translating that into your own words. <sighs> so remembering that as often as you can, and maybe I'll remind you once in a while, we're going to begin going around the room like we do. And because I know some of you are not familiar with me or this style and you might be less at ease, I'm going to put Ron on the spot who I know can handle it. <laughs> And we'll go around in a circle from him and end with Julie. And right now, and as we're doing this, check in with your body once in a while, right? And, and maybe I'll even invite the bell occasionally like this. Just totally haphazard, casual, not like formal, polite, from village style, but with that intention from Thich Nhat Hanh to call us back to the present moment in the Tejaniya style. There's no, no one calling you back. It, it just, it's just there. It's amazing. It's so amazing. I hope you get to taste it. But tonight, as we're, we're starting to ease into it and learn how to do it, and I'm learning how to teach it, I'll use the bell once in a while to help us. Just like, oh, how am I? What's going on? And if what are you aware of is a useful question for you, that's fine. But I think that can also kind of have a tightening response. So my inclination is to just offer rest, to let that bell be a call to rest. Maybe I'll use that language tonight, a call to rest. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. And if I was like with my Thich Nhat Hanh hat on, which I guess I always am on, if I have my, you know, put on my brown robes and everything, I always say notice what it's like to drink whatever you're drinking out of that cup, you know? Feel the weight, feel the heat, notice the taste, notice the appreciation of it or the not appreciation of it or whatever is going on. It's like, well, this is my experience in this moment. Yeah, Thai, I, that's more of my root tradition. Like I set you a focus on being it with your physical experience. So, okay. All right. So here, here's the question. Here's the prompt. Name, pronouns. <clears throat> ah, and then, and I'll offer this question now to give everyone a little bit of time to reflect on it. What brings you ease? Have you had an experience in the last few days, weeks, months, this year, this lifetime of really feeling at ease or relaxed or at peace? Or again, maybe your words are different. Translate. Translate. It's not, this is not a, a tight um, kind of thing. And there's a little part of me that's like, well, maybe you should model, should. There's a little part of me that's maybe inspired to model, but I, I think that that might incline you to do it a certain way, so I'm not going to do that. Right? Letting go of any ideas of it's supposed to be or should be a particular way. What, what brings you ease or what arises in your heart mind in response to that question? Maybe it's the opposite of ease. Maybe it's like, you're going to make me talk. All right. And if Julie asks us to pass the microphone, we'll pass the microphone. But if we don't need to, we'll leave it on the floor to create more ease. Great. All right. And occasionally, yeah, nature going in and out of you. How many of you have been up on Vernal? <laughs> 
you know, like we live here, right? If you're up on Bernal and you're there, it's magical. Whether it's shrouded in fog or crystal clear and sunny, because you're there. That's why it's magical. Because we're there in nature, experiencing nature. It's such a cliche, but like, you know, we are one with nature. <laughs> but it's true, actually. Like, that's the manifestation of it. Yeah. All right, lots and lots of words. I hope that you had moments when there was awareness that you were hearing or that you were speaking or that your body was responding to the hearing or the speaking in any way, even if it's just a crazy ass pain in your neck, you know? Like, ha. <sighs> So if you're up for it, see what it's like to stay in whatever posture you're in. And if you want to adjust your posture, you're welcome to. We'll get to enjoy 10 minutes of quote unquote meditating. And let's see if it's possible for it to not be very different from what you've just been doing. I invite you to explore Wow. Resting in and opening to whatever experience might be arising and passing. So maybe you have a practice of resting into awareness of the breath, and that will arise because there's a habit there. No problem. No problem. And Explore not consciously, intentionally bringing attention to the breath, but rather resting and opening to whatever might be arising in the field of awareness. Cultivating, <clears throat> cultivating a receptive awareness in which we are allowing wakefulness to come and go as we are aware of whatever might come and go into our field of awareness.
Resting. Allowing Welcoming. Opening. No parts left out.
continuing to be aware, not ending your meditation, but simply enjoying those 10 minutes as a little noticing how it feels inside right the bell is beautiful and it can be a big support and our attention can go out to listening to the bell listening to the rising and passing is a beautiful practice and what's it like to tune into the body to how it feels Becoming intimate with the experience of awareness itself rather than limited to the objects of our awareness. That's the real distinction that's being offered here, which I didn't. We'll explore that more in July. <laughs> but my hope is that this 10 minute sit can be like a little push on the swing of the ride of your life, right? That it's just a little, gets you a little bit of momentum for your practice and that your practice and that your practice is not limited to your meditation, but that awareness can infuse your, your lived experience. Yeah, thank you so much for your presence here this evening for the opportunity to share this expression of the Dhamma with you. It's really a gift for me. I think it's I, my hope. <laughs> it has so far in my life, but this new way, the sharing of it will deepen my practice of it. And then I might be able to share it with you so that you can touch it and it can deepen your practice so that you might benefit of Like that's the whole point. That's the whole point. So any way that it was other than that, please accept my apologies and let it go. That was unskillfulness on my part, not the Dhamma, not Saudi Tejaniya, not the collective. <laughs> and there'll be some wonderful teachers here the next few weeks. I am going to Philadelphia. First, I'm going to Point Reyes, so I won't be here next week. It's my husband's birthday. And I'm going to Philadelphia. Well, maybe I'm back before I go to Philly. You might get me in two weeks, actually. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, because I leave on Wednesday. So I'll be here in two weeks, which is Monday the 13th, maybe? I got a nod. So I'll be here in two weeks. We'll do more of this, maybe. Or maybe it'll be completely different. I'll share my practice with you, whatever my practice is looking like come that day. And I'll be back on July 1st immediately out of a month of this. So it'll be very, very solid Tejania stuff. I imagine, who, who, who knows? But as I said, Love will be here and Marini and you'll be in great hands. And of course, there's lots of other amazing teachers here in other time slots.